Good morning. I'm the Reverend Brad Hinton. I'm the pastor of missions here at Davidson United Methodist Church, and I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. I hope you're all doing well today. In addition to today being the second Sunday after Pentecost, it is also annual conference Sunday, Juneteenth, and Father's Day. Holidays and days in which we remember can bring a whole host of emotions. Some experience joy and happiness, while others experience anger and grief. Wherever you find yourself today, remember God is with you. The last two Sundays, I have been in Guatemala with one of our mission partners all in Guatemala. I imagine that many of you are familiar with this organization as it was an internal ministry of our church for um, many years in the past. However, in the recent years, it has become its own organization. And in addition to the year-round programs that All in Guatemala offers annually, bar the pandemic, uh, the ministry takes a trip to Guatemala. Each year they go, and this year I was able to join the group for the trip. About 10 years ago, I lived in Guatemala and El Salvador for two and a half months. I have visited several Spanish-speaking countries. I love Latin America. I try to speak Spanish as often as I'm able to, and my role on the trip was pastor and EMT. I took a lot of blood pressures and uh, blood sugar checks. The trip began on June the 4th, and my flight departed at 7.10 out of Charlotte, and I was advised not two hours, but three hours early, which meant that I was supposed to arrive at the airport at 4.10 in the morning. (laughs) Wonk, wonk. (laughs) So I scheduled my ride through one of the rideshare apps to pick me up between 3.15 and 3.30, the ride or the, the driver showed up at 3.14. I was like, come on, can we not go on the 3.30 side of this? <laughs> so I kissed Meredith and Seth goodbye, good morning. Um, gather my bags, load my bags into the car, and I am off to the airport, hoping <laughs> that everything is there somewhere uh, to get to Guatemala. Now, some of you may not do this. However, I tend to talk to the ride share driver, tend to ask questions. You know, I I like to do that with most folks. If you go to a restaurant with me, most of the time I will ask the person serving, where are they from? You know, tell tell me a bit of their story because I hope to try and build bridges and connect with people. So I asked this question. I said, you know, are there ever those rides that you give that, You're like really glad when the ride is over. (laughs) And they said, yes, and the Christians are the worst. (laughs) Okay, you got my attention, right? Here we are. What's going to happen next? So, you know, I inquired more about like, well, tell me more. As it turns out, I'm a pastor. And they stayed right there, like, this is their truth, right? And so in so many words, what they said was, the Christians say they love their neighbor, but they don't. So this is how my trip to Guatemala began. I was going with a team to love our neighbors in Guatemala And I had heard from someone right here in our community that was not so sure that the Christians loved their neighbor. So hold on to that story for a little while and share in this moment as we hear this scripture this morning as well. In these middle verses of the scripture, which we'll focus on, we hear this. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into 
to Christ and clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew nor Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. So the scripture is quite a contrast to the story that the rideshare driver had. The scripture reminds us that we are all one in Christ Jesus, which would mean everyone, not just the people who look and think like us, but we are all one in Christ Jesus. Those who live in our neighborhood and those who live on the other side of town. Those who live in our country and those who live in other countries. And this scripture reminds us that in Christ our division falls away and we are one in Christ Jesus. Yet in the very same moment our lived experiences I heard so loudly from the front seat In our community, we hear our neighbors saying, and the Christians are the worst. So where is this disconnect? While we all have our unique characteristics, why do we often find ourselves seeking to divide ourselves into different groups around various topics? We divide ourselves around everything from college basketball, political parties, theology, and so many other topics. And once we have divided ourselves into these groups, we then metaphorically, or maybe not so metaphorically, begin to throw rocks at the other group, which sometimes leads folks who are observing us and watching us to say things like, and the Christians are the worst. Yet again, we read this passage, and it says, for in Christ Jesus, We are all children of God through faith. So what happened? How did we move to such a divided and divisive world? How did we move to a place where trench warfare is the norm instead of seeking to build bridges and connect with one another, no matter what our differences might be? And one of the great images that we have that we can see this at work lived out is when we come together at the communion table. During our trip, we were able to visit with one of the Methodist churches in Guatemala, and that particular Sunday, they were serving communion. For me, this is such a powerful image of our oneness in Christ Jesus. The communion table is not the table that's been set by the pastor or is the the pastor. Christ sets the table, prepares the table. This is not our church's table. This is not even our denomination's table. This is Christ's table and we are invited to the table. The communion liturgy says, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him. The table is Christ's table. And the great thanksgiving is a prayer that we look at one another with our eyes open, but we are praying that to God together. In communion, we encounter Christ. We live into the holy mystery of the transforming works of Christ in communion. And so as a mission team, we found ourselves in this Guatemalan Methodist church sharing the Lord's Supper together. We were from different places, vastly different socioeconomic statuses, We, the mission team, didn't know all the words to the songs that were sung, and we didn't know every word that was preached. However, we met at the table. We came together at the table. We were one in Christ Jesus. And I wonder if you've experienced those moments in your life. Have you volunteered with somebody of another faith or faith tradition and 
volunteered at a community ministry and learned about their faith and what has led them to do the things that they are doing as they're living out their faith and as you are living out your faith together? Have you walked with a friend and talked with a friend about your faith and your spiritual life and discovered a connection? We think about the broad connection with other people of faith on World Communion Sunday, for example. However, we don't spend much time reflecting on that everyday connection with one another as we are connected through and with Christ. And again, how did this happen where we find ourselves, we as Christians, that we are now known by some as not loving our neighbor. And I wonder if part of this is the narrative. How is this narrative of not loving our neighbor being propagated or shared? Has this been caused by the lines of, the, of division that we have drawn for the ways in which we have sought to see what's different in one another instead of how we might come together? We have been vilifying one another. We have been looking for the differences instead of ways in which we can connect and work together. We even acknowledge this on a weekly basis when we pray the confession that we prayed. We say, we have not loved you. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And then we say it. We have not loved our neighbors. Which, of course, reminds me of Paul in Romans 7, 15, where he says, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. We know the things we ought to do, what we're called to do, how we should respond, but we don't. We are hypocrites, and sometimes we learn that our neighbors see our hypocrisy, and don't see us loving. So now what? Where do we go from here? And I'm glad you asked. Here's one avenue forward. It is to begin to more clearly share the stories of God at work in our lives, in our church, and in our community. This year at annual conference, like every year, we learn about God's work across the conference. We learn about fresh expressions and the ways in which people are reimagining what church looks like. We learned about why people are United Methodist, and we saw a lot of really good that is being done in the world through the various ministries across our conference. We heard people share stories about their own personal faith journey with Jesus Christ. What's your story? Why are you a Christian? Why do you participate in the life of the church? How are you living out your faith? How do you see God at work in the world? Recently, we had our first DMC Missions Connectional Table where we invited all the liaisons for all the ministries that we are a part of, all the mission ministries that we are a part of, and we came together and we shared stories. And one of those things that we asked the liaisons to tell about the work that they're doing in our community, we asked them, tell us a story about how God is moving in these ministries. And we heard about God leading deeper connections and conversations. We heard about God being uh, in the feeding ministry and caring for people physically. We heard about the earth literally being cultivated right across the street and the lives of those people with different abilities being enriched. God is at work in our church and our community and we still have work to do we know that we are all one in christ jesus however when we look at others do we look 
to see Jesus in them. If not, now's a great time to start. We easily hear gossip and harsh words spoken about other people, which makes me wonder, if we sought to see that we were all one in Christ Jesus, then maybe, maybe we would begin to change the narrative. And the world needs a story of hope. And you can be a part of sharing that hope. Let it begin here. Let it begin with us. Share your story with other people. Share stories of the good work that you see in the lives of people in ministry. Share the good, good things that God is doing here through the various ministries that we are a part of. Share the stories about lives transformed. Encourage one another. Offer hope for one another. And share about the exciting things happening at our church. This morning we have several of our Main Street kids, youth, and uh, young adults in worship with us this morning. Pastor Meredith, my wife, um, says that each young person needs five adults in their life. I see five people in the room. You can be a part of the formation and shaping of young people's lives, and you can share a story of hope. And for you Main Street kids, youth and young people, you too, as the scripture says, are clothed in Christ. You too can offer kindness and hope. And you can do that with your friends at school. You can do it on the playground when you're kind to one another. And you can do it within the walls of the house in which you live. You help teach the older people at the same time that we are teaching you. Thanks for being with us this morning. So you may say, well, I'm just one person. How can I change anything? It's a great way to give yourself an out. I'm going to invite you not to do that. Maybe you saw this uh, video, this YouTube video. It's like 12 years old at this point. It's leadership from a dancing guy. And the video begins with this one lone guy at a music festival in the grass section of the seats, you know. He just starts breaking it down just all by himself up there, just going to town, dancing all by himself. And you know in those moments where a minute feels like an hour? I imagine that's what it felt like for him because he was up there by himself just dancing, going to town, cutting a rug, as my dad might say, dancing a jig, right? Just having a great time by himself. And one guy comes up and joins him. And instead of just kind of ignoring that he's there, he he embraces this other guy, and they begin to dance together. He leans into that. And so then other people saw that that, that was a movement that started, and then another person joins in, and then two more people come in, and all of a sudden it's this whole group of people, and they're just going to town dancing, having a great time. And it all started by this one person who stood in this moment for a period of time, and maybe... We could interpret that as shared the good news, if we use that metaphor. Talked about the amazing things that are happening. And then when someone inquired about it and wanted to learn more, he leaned into them. How do we then share that with folks? Share the good things that are going on. The world is filled with division and pain. We have no idea what people are walking around with. I had this distinct memory. I, was, um, I had just learned that my dad had passed away. This was probably four years ago, maybe a little less than four years ago. And I was driving home to be with my family, and I pulled into a gas station to uh, get a, probably a Diet Pepsi and a pack of crackers. And I thought, nobody knows what I'm getting ready to go and see. And what would it be like 
to just offer kindness to people, offer hope to people, offer generosity and encouragement to people because we really have no idea what you may be walking through right at this very moment or what people you may meet uh, as you go from this place this morning. And so in a world filled with division and pain, let us remember that we are clothed in Christ and we are all one in Christ Jesus. And look around. You don't have to dance alone because there are people here to join and dance with you already here. And so you are invited to join in the good work that God is doing in our church and in our community. We have many opportunities for you to serve and to share with the world that Christians do love their neighbors. Sometimes we're hypocrites, likely twice on Sunday, but we are committed to being the body of Christ in our community, and we are committed to loving and serving our neighbor. Sometimes we make mistakes, but may the story change that the Christians aren't the worst because we don't really love our neighbors. But may the stories be told about how we do and how you are involved and how you are impacting the world and the community and sharing the good news and how you are being transformed as you are transforming the community. So I invite you to go on to our website, onto the service tab, look at the various mission opportunities that we have. I invite you to reach out to me. One of the joys of being a pastor in this role is to help you discern the ways in which God is calling you, the gifts and graces that God has offered you, and then to help match your gifts and graces and callings with the opportunities that we have to serve. Please reach out. And at the very same moment, continue to attend to the spiritual disciplines in your life. The spiritual disciplines are vitally important to the work in which we do in the mission work. Spiritual disciplines inform mission work. Mission work informs spiritual discipline. It's both and. So continue to attend to the spiritual disciplines in your life. And remember the scripture that we have today which says, as many of you were baptized into Christ and clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And as we hear about being one with Christ, hear this prayer, St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that we may not much seek to be consoled, as to console, to be understood, as to understand, to be loved, as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.